What's going on fam? It's your boy Adobo. We're here at Triumph of Seattle again. We're here with my homie Haley. You guys have seen her in some of the videos. Uh, she's actually one of the managers here at the store. So if you come down, say what's up to her. Tell her Adobo sent you. We're here today because there's a couple things that I missed in the last video, which is, you know, I think it's really important to tell you guys about the technical specs before I actually go out and test ride because there's a lot of things that I missed. And there's a lot of things that I kind of didn't understand because I, you guys know I'm not a technical dude. I'm all about feel, fit, and finish. So Haley here, she actually knows a lot more than I do. So she's gonna go more in depth about what this new RF1400 has to offer because like I said, I'm an idiot. So <laughs> <laughs> take it away, Haley. All right, cool. So Haley, tell me about uh, what is new and then what is old. So I want to start with the, the thing that I really want to start with is, you know, what is this? What is that? That That's one thing that like caught me off guard. It was like, what the heck is that rubber? Like I showed Jason and he was like, uh, I don't know what that is either, right? So what is it? Uh, so basically uh, they've redesigned all the cheek pads in here. So all of the cheek pads have a plusher feel and they um, hug your neck a little bit more snugly. Okay. Um, they've also reinforced the EPS liner um, in this area of the, uh, like behind the visor. Okay. Uh, so I think this is mostly to get that snug fit around the, the neck roll. Gotcha. And it's also uh, to add a little bit of reinforcement to that area. Okay. Okay. So when Jason tried it on, he did say it was it felt a little more snug. And then when I actually looked underneath and I compared the two, the RF12 and this, you're right. It is. It looks a lot tighter. Yeah. And you're saying? I know you told me. Does that improve sound, like noise? Yeah. So the whole point of the uh, snug neck roll is to reduce the amount of air that can get up underneath the, the neck opening. Okay. So um, the less air, the quieter the helmet's going to feel. Okay. It's also going to feel more secure. Okay. Um, and overall just have a, a more a, a more perfect fit. Cool. Okay, so now tell me about this new visor mechanism in the front. Now I understand that um, it's a whole new visor system. I didn't have issues because I haven't written it yet. How do you feel about this? Why do you think they changed this? Is there a reason for that? Like, give me your thoughts on that. It doesn't have to be like exact because I know, um, you know, I don't think anybody has the answers to why Showy does what, right? Actually, um, okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, they changed the closure system to move it in the front so there's a more even amount of pressure along uh, the seal of the visor. So before when it was on the side, you get additional pressure here and less pressure on the opposite side of the visor. And having the closure mechanism in the center just gives it an even seal all the way around. That makes a lot of sense because yeah. I'll tell you what, on the 1200, I did have issues with like getting air on one side versus yeah. the other. And I was like, what is that weird like like air noise on this side, yeah, yeah. but not on this side. So that is actually a huge improvement yeah. mm -hmm. right, over the predecessor. Yeah, plus it, I think it personally um, makes sense to have it in the middle instead of the side because if you're uh, like, if you're riding, sometimes you need to alternate fans to open your visor. Like if you're riding on the highway and you're like pinned on the throttle, then you're gonna wanna use your left hand to crack your visor open instead of like reaching across your body to do that. Now it's just in the middle, so it's a central location. I didn't even think of that. That's <laughs> that's actually a real issue that um, I guess Shoei solved by putting it right in the center. So yeah, yeah. That's a really, really good point. Okay, so now tell me, I don't know if I got this right in the last video, but tell me what the heck these are, these little detents. What are these? The detents are vortex generators. So those reduce the wind turbulence uh, that comes over the seams of the visor. Uh, so that'll reduce the, the noise of the wind and uh, overall make it a more aerodynamic helmet as well. That's awesome, that's awesome. Okay, so tell me about the design. Okay, so I, I personally think it's extremely similar mm -hmm. to the 1200 and a lot of people are already asking me, would this be a worthy upgrade to the 1200 or should we wait another generation? So say like, like for me, I bought it because Okay, I was kind of like needing to upgrade my 1200 anyway. It's been past the five year mark, yeah. right? And I was just going to change the cheek pads, but I was like, okay, there's a new system, there's a new helmet, and it's improved over the design. For somebody who just bought the 1200, uh, like let's say yesterday, right? Do you feel like they're losing out? 
on the 1400 or do you think like they're, they're completely fine with the 1200 and they don't necessarily have to go out and buy the 14 because that's that's i think that's important to the audience and that's really yeah. helpful well you know it's like it's hard to say because if you've just purchased a, a, a 1200 then um i'm not sure it's like everybody has their own priorities right um and their own budget so i can't say for sure for everybody whether it's worth the upgrade but sure. there have been some significant um improvements in the should we like do that again? Because no, no, you're fine. That's okay. fine. There have been some significant improvements in the design of the helmet. Um, it uses the same AIM shell composite okay. uh, as the RF 1200, okay. um, but it is a new shape completely. They've made it a bit more aerodynamic. Okay. Um, this little swoop right here mm -hmm. is designed to be a spoiler. Right. Um, the shell of the helmet actually reduces drag and lift, right. which that means like when you're riding, especially on the highway, especially on a naked bike that doesn't have fairings that deflect the wind for you, um, you can usually feel at higher speeds there's some resistance, like you have to push your face into the wind okay. um, with helmets that aren't as aerodynamic. That was a problem that I had with the RF 1200 on my FC07 when I would ride on the mm -hmm. highway. I would get tired over a period of time because of the drag um, and the strain on my neck. Okay. So this has reduced the drag, um, which should make it cut through the air a lot more effectively and more smoothly. Um, so it should be a, a pretty big improvement um, as far as how it feels. And I'll let you decide if that's actually what when you're I actually ride it. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for yeah. your explanation. I actually learned quite a lot, more than I thought I would. Thank you, Haley. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, I'm gonna go over the uh, actual fit, feel, and finish like when I'm actually riding. I have, uh, you know, I got the FZ09 at home, the ZX6R, and the, the Panigale. I'll ride them all, man. I'll ride them all for you guys so that way you guys can understand, like, because that's, I rode the FZ09 from Vancouver, Washington to to here, and on the 1200, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I could definitely feel uh, more headwind. If that is, what, like, what Shoei advertises, is like, it's going to cut through the wind. It's a lot more aerodynamic. For me, somebody like me, if I had just bought, a 1200 like say a year ago versus five years ago yeah that might be a, a make it or break it for me right where it's like oh shit this one cuts through the wind better yeah right. and see those are my only two qualms with the rf 1200 personally mm -hmm. is that i wish that it cut through the wind a little bit better and i wish it was a little bit less noisy right. i mean obviously i'm wearing earplugs most of the time but if i forget um then i did notice that sort of drone after a while from the wind noise mm -hmm. like, that's that's true for like almost every helmet mm -hmm. um but if I was gonna make any suggestions to Shoei on things to fix, those would have been the two things. Cool. So I'm kind of excited that that's what they focused on for the R1400 as far as making the necessary changes. And you know, they didn't fix anything that wasn't broken, right? Right, so, right, right. Um, all of the, the features that you like about the RF1200 are still there, cool. but they've made some changes to make it just function just a little bit better. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially for, I mean, you ride, she rides naked bikes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, My yeah. bike now is a Ducati Street Fighter 848. Right. Obviously with no fairings or windscreen. I just, just, <laughs> she just got it back, guys. It got stolen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, I'm sure you're happy it came back. Yeah. But I think for the naked guys, the naked riders, yeah. uh, definitely that. <laughs> right? <laughs> I always make fun of Jay. I always make fun of Jason. Guys, turn it around. Turn the camera around, bro. Say what's up. He's my new cameraman. Say what's up. Hello, guys. Mason Jagat here. <laughs> Just put it back. Just put it back. But yeah, I always make fun of him for being a naked rider, and I'm like, all right. But this might be a helmet for you, man. Yeah. Who knows? All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna go test ride it right now. I'll catch you guys back in a few, and I'll let you guys know what I think. Thank you, Haley, You're for welcome. helping me. Oh, that's why this bike feels weird. <laughs> I'm on street mode, yo. Anyway, welcome to the test ride. This is actually like my first few few miles on the new RF 1400. So far, initial impressions. What do I like about it? I normally ride with the tinted shield. Right now, I'm riding with the clear shield. For some reason, I think the field of view is better on the 1400. Remember what I said? Fit, feel, finish. Fit, feel, finish, and view, and sound. The sound part, sound part doesn't bother me. But the view, I think this is better. But don't, don't. let me get a, a clear shield on the 1200, and then I'll get back to you. Sport, race, boom, that's what I love. There it is. 
There it is. <laughs> We're about to take it on the freeway. The wind noise on the freeway. I think that's where. Uh, that's what we'll really test it out. I'll do some like like sitting sitting up riding like I'm on a naked. That way you guys can you know get a good feel. I know one of you guys was asking like, oh, I wonder how it's gonna feel on my MT10, and I'm like, well, I have FZ09. I could try it on, but I guess it would be the same thing if I just kind of stood up. Oh, it feels way better. The face shield mechanism is it's awesome. Look. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. All right, we're about to test out these aerodynamics. 6% drag or something like that? I don't know. We'll see. I don't even know if my tires are inflated correctly. I normally check in before I leave, but I'm kind of late. And I'm trying to get back home before heavy traffic hits. Okay, I'm sitting straight up. Fine! Fine, Shelby, fine. This is me straight up, guys. Straight up. It's kind of windy today, too. And it's surprisingly... Surprisingly very stable. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Yo! Yo! This helmet! This helmet might be a game changer, yo. I'm telling you that right now. I have ridden the 1000, the 1100, and the 1200. And look, I'm sitting straight. I'm sitting straight up, yo. I am sitting straight up. And my head is like as stable as it can get. You know, it's got like, today's a windy day. Um, I'm doing 68 on my speedometer. I'm chilling right now. Like, I can feel more wind on my chest. I mean, I guess that makes sense, but I feel more unstable down here than I do up here. Wow. Wow. Yo. <laughs> no way, dude. I've been like cruising it. I mean, I don't know, man. Oh, I don't know how much it bothered me before. I'd have to double, like, go back, ride the 1200, and then really see, right? So right now, I'm riding, I mean, I'm telling you, I've had four years straight on my 1200. And this helmet, noise-wise, yeah, I get that, but that drag, that drag, that drag! <laughs> Yo, okay, okay, all right. Alright. <laughs> this might be like yo, this might be the track day helmet for next year. Maybe. Maybe. I got the pista. I got the pista and that's a that's an awesome ass helmet man, I'm telling you. very confidence inspiring only because it I mean if you get the right size I like it I like my helmet tight tight and that could be another reason that could be another reason but right now I'm gonna give it to the 14 man over the 1200 I'm gonna give it to the 14 over the 1200 and I kind of knew that because you know mine's, mine's pretty old it's pretty worn inside right I took pretty good care of it to be honest and I actually went down on it twice. Luckily I never uh, I never hit the ground. Like my head never hit the ground, but um, granted that 12 hand that 12 hand that 1200 lasted a long time and I bet I could just change out the cheek pads and the center center pad. Whoa. And it would be fine, it would be okay. Um, right now though, kinda enjoying the 14. It is freaking windy, dude. And it's not like... It's not like it cuts through that kind of wind, right? If I'm being honest, I bet the Pista can handle this kind of wind a lot better. Because that's what it was made for, 
right? This is more like an all-around street track day. Um, you know, I know a buddy, a, a few buddies that race the 400. And, um, let me look at that, I'm like down there. I mean, it's it's doable. It's, it's definitely doable at the racetrack. Uh, if I was racing, strictly racing, I'd probably go for the Pisa just because the field of view, um, being tucked in, you could see a lot more. But is it, is it usable for the track day? Absolutely. Street riding? Hell to the fucking yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Like, yo. This is fire. Joey knows what they're doing. And my only doubt, my only gripe with this whole thing, right, is I'm a cheap ass, man. I know you gotta see all the bikes and all that stuff, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, ah, if I don't need it, I'm not gonna cop it, you know what I mean? I had a piece out of perfectly good piece stuff, but I also got a really good deal on the helmet, so I'm not crying too much. Um, I definitely got my money's worth. For somebody who is going to go from the 1200 to the 1400, and their 1200 is a little bit old, right? I would say three years old at the minimum. If you're looking like two years, I would say give it another year or two for your, your 1200 before you upgrade. Um, to the 1400. Woo! Oh yeah, this this helmet's stable. Yeah, give it a few years. Give it, give it like if, if you just got it, the 1200 two years ago, give it a few years, right? Two or three, then upgrade to the 14 because you won't you won't be disappointed because it is it's everything they say it is. The sound thing, I don't I don't necessarily think it's like I don't know like it just doesn't bother me. I don't care about the sound deal. Wind noise goes right with the sound thing for me. But you know if that if that is something that's important to you, um, then it may not be worth the upgrade, right? I know Haley was telling me what's important to her is the uh, the headwind, the uh, the aerodynamics is really important to her because she rides naked bikes. She has I think she has two naked bikes. She has the FZ and then she has the Duck, the fighter. And look, I, I've been like mostly sit up this whole ride. And it's been great, dudes. It's been really good. I'm I am like pleasantly surprised. I am pleasantly surprised because I was kind of ticked off. I was like, damn, come on, I could have just replaced the cheap pads and whatnot. And I know you're not supposed to do that. Manufacturers tell you, you know, there's a shelf life or, or some kind of life for your helmet. But hey, man, that, that's a risk I'm willing to take because, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand those risks, but at the same time, you can go get a brand new half helmet and my old Showy RF 1200 would still probably be better. Not probably, it would definitely be better. So, oh man, oh man, yeah. Um, field of view, track day helmet, track day and street helmet, for sure. Would I just be track only in this helmet? Definitely not, I don't like the field of view. Um, it's more street oriented, which is fine, you know. Pista is tucked in. I hate comparing the two, but, you know, one's a race helmet, one's more like a all around helmet, but. That's what I compare it to. <laughs> Cause that's what I got. <laughs> anyway, we're meeting Carl. Let's go get some coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go get some coffee. Woo! Would you look at that view, guys? My goodness gracious.